about three or four years ago, someone uh, reached out to me who didn't come to the church and asked me how to hear God's voice. And so I agreed to have lunch with them. And we went to a, a, a restaurant uh, quite close here to the church. And over lunch, we were discussing how to hear God's voice. Now, I don't hear the audible voice of God, but I ran through three or four things that have been helpful to me. And as we were talking over lunch, I asked him, hey, would you like to, would you like to practice? Let's try to hear something for our server. And so he was intrigued. And so we uh, stopped and prayed and listened. And we both uh, in that moment uh, got some random picture in our minds that could have been God. And so I, I in, in that moment, I asked him, hey, let's tell the server what we heard. And he was quite nervous, but he agreed with it. So the server came back and we had shared, you know, in a humble manner, not sure if this was God, maybe it makes sense, but here's, as we were praying for you, here's what we saw. And I, I can remember the, uh, the image that one of us got was a shackle around a, a, a foot. And the other image that one of us got was a bunch of kids. And so we just shared that, like how weird is that at the restaurant? And uh, this woman server stopped writing and she immediately sat down and she started to cry because her uh, husband was someone who was on house arrest and she had kids and she was wondering how she was going to make ends meet. And so in that moment, that was pretty close to understanding that was God, uh, we were able to pray for her and encourage her. There's power in hearing God's voice. Maybe not the audible voice of God. I've never heard God's audible voice. But God, I believe, is speaking probably more than we realize. And we just have to tune in to what he might be saying. And so I want to share some of the things that I shared over that quick lunch discussion with that young man uh, and hopefully allow us, more people, to hear from and discern the voice of God. But the first thing that we need to realize is that, uh, that God is talking. We can look in scripture a couple of examples. Psalm 29, 4, it says, The voice of the Lord is powerful and majestic. So his voice is powerful. However we hear it, it his voice can do things. It's majestic. It's, it can be loud at times, even though we don't hear it audibly. Hebrews 4, 12 says that God's, that the word of God is alive and active. Now we can take that to mean, which is absolutely correct, scripture in the Bible, the word of God is alive and active today. Absolutely. But I believe, and I, I've seen, just like the story I told earlier, uh, where God can be speaking and what he's speaking and how he's speaking in the moment is so powerful and, and his voice is alive today. In John 10, 27, Jesus is sharing. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. In just that verse, in that sentence that Jesus is sharing, there's this implication that, that people are listening and should be listening to the voice of God and following what he says. And so I want to share just some really basic things. Like the first thing I want to share is that we can generally hear three voices. And maybe you've heard this, but when I say this, it's, it's not just audible voices, but voices... Uh, that we can hear in our soul or in our mind. And so let me break these down. We can hear the voice of God. And, and maybe I'll give you uh, additional examples here in a minute, but maybe it's just a spontaneous thought that comes to mind. But maybe it's God's voice. And God's voice sounds like it's encouraging even when it's correcting. It it's always aligns with scripture. God's not going to tell us something that, that goes against what it says in scripture. And God's voice would move us away from sin into a closer relationship to him. And so what if, what if the voice or the spontaneous thought we had in our mind was God's voice and we acted on that and it drew us closer to him and in a relationship with him? So we can hear God's voice. The second voice we can hear is our own voice. It's our own internal voice and generally uh, our voice uh, sounds very personal, like I'm hungry. Or I want to go do that, right? It's very I and personal focus. I believe this. I need to have this. It sometimes can be very selfish. Even our own voice, after we've heard God's voice, our own voice can go and question God's voice. Is that God? And so the third voice we can hear is the enemy's voice. And the enemy's voice is many times critical and insulting and 
sometimes demeaning. He, he might use phrases like always and never. Oh, you, you'll never be able to do that. Or you're always going to be like this. And so the enemy loves to, to use those phrases to pull us out of maybe something God's calling us to do. So we can hear God's voice and sometimes we question God's voice with our own voice and then the enemy comes in and agrees with our voice and then we just discount this whole cycle of being able to hear God. And for, for many years in my own Christian walk, I just discounted that the, uh, the ways in which God speaks to us. And so I, it's helpful to understand that we can hear three voices, God's voice, our voice, and the enemy's voice. And hearing is about relationship. We want to have relationship with God. It's difficult to hear from God when we don't have a strong relationship with him. Here's a couple of scriptures. Psalm 139. It says, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We should have this relationship where we're searching for a connection with God. Jeremiah 29 uh, many of you know verse 11, but I'm actually going to look at verses 12 and 13. It says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen. God is waiting for us to call to him in relationship. He's going to listen and you'll seek me and find me. And when you search me with all your heart, that's the relationship God is looking for so he can speak to us. John uh, 17, 3, Jesus shares this. Now, this is eternal life that they may know you. So as, as Jesus is praying, there's this desire that the followers of God would actually know. And that the Greek word of know actually has this implication of it's not just know of him. It's actually to know God in a relationship. And so we can hear God way clearer when we're in deep relationship with him and spend time with him. Now, I want to give you a couple of, of tips on how to hear God's voice more clearly. And again, it's not the audible voice of God, but maybe it is. But um, there's other ways to hear it. Here's, here's some tips. The first is believe you can hear. Have some confidence that God might be talking and that you want to tune in. And so have some confidence that you can hear. Ephesians 3.12 says, In him and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. There's a level of confidence that we should have when we approach God that he may want to say something to us. And so we listen and we approach God with confidence. The second is to recognize God's voice as spontaneous thoughts. Many of us, I don't know about you, but I think many of us have these spontaneous thoughts that enter our mind. And what if when we ask God a question, if the spontaneous thought that entered our mind, what if that was God speaking? The other way that would be helpful is to be still and remove the noise. I, I know for me, the world can get really noisy. I, I, I enjoy my cell phone. And it's hard to hear when there's other things going on or when my focus is not directly on him. And so just a great way to, to hear his voice more clearly is to reduce the noise around you. And it seems so obvious, but it's a big challenge. The other is uh, th through scripture reading. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I read in my Bible, I'll read a verse and sometimes that verse, even though I've read it a dozen times before, that verse just leaps out at me. And so just being aware of some of the simple things like Bible reading that God might want to speak through that. Or even in nature, he might want to speak through something simple in nature. Being open to the fact that it doesn't have to be the audible voice of God. It can be other ways. I just need to be open to different ways that he speaks. So those are some quick ways in which can help us hear from God in new ways. I actually want to give you a couple of different ways that God might speak. And many of these, if not all of these, are scriptural. God can speak in pictures. As I was sharing the story at the beginning of this, uh, of the young man over lunch, and we both got sort of spontaneous pictures in our mind. God created you with uh, uh, the ability to have an imagination. And that imagination is like a blackboard that he can write on. And so the image that one of us got of a, a foot with shackles, God's speaking in that way. Or uh, you get a picture of children and God speaks in different pictures. He can speak to you in pictures. He can speak to you in scripture as you're reading scripture and a verse jumps out at you. Maybe that's the Lord highlighting that verse for you. He can speak to you in words. Maybe there's a word that comes to you in, in, in a spontaneous moment. What if that was God, that word that just crosses your mind? I've had instances where people have come to me, people I didn't even know, 
and they just felt like they should share something with me. And so it's, maybe it's a word from another person and God's using that other person. Maybe it's a feeling or an impression that you have. It could be a dream. If you're a dreamer, I would encourage you to write your dreams down. Maybe they're from God and, and some of those can be very powerful. And nature is another way. Uh, I connect with nature and so sometimes I connect in ways where I hear God more clearly when I'm by myself and out in nature. And sometimes music and worship helps. So there's many different ways that God can speak. And all those ways, you can actually look in the Bible. That's how God speaks to other people. Now, if, God, if you think that God has spoken through you, it's always good to examine what you're hearing. And so here's a couple of tips. First Thessalonians 5 says it this way. It says, don't treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. It's a good reminder to me when I think I've heard something from the Lord, the ability to test that. You can have a, God, did you say this? Even in a prayer, you can ask the Lord. You can ask other people who are Christians that have your best interests in mind. Hey, I think I've heard this from the, from the Lord. What do you think? And the Bible would say that with many advisors, that our plans prosper. And so it's just good to ask other people as well. And it's always good to look in scripture in context to confirm, you know what, that might be the Lord. And so there's ways to test what you hear. And it's always good to remember that words from the Lord should bring more clarity. They might not be perfectly clear, but it shouldn't lead you into seasons of confusion and fear. God is not a God of confusion. He wants to help you. He's trying to get our attention and lead us into things that he has plans for in our lives. Another thing that's, that's good to consider is we might have areas in our life that block us from hearing. And so here's just a couple of quick tips. If you have a lack of relationship with God or you're not spending time with him, you might not hear as clearly. And so I would just encourage you to have a relationship with God. Spend time with him every day. If you have bitterness or unforgiveness about a situation or another person, it's good to resolve those things before God's going to speak into them. Maybe he's waiting for you to do the very basic things, to actually forgive the other person before you start hearing clearly from them. Not loving the person or having unrepentant sin in your life can also block you from hearing God clearly. If you have pride about a specific situation, it can be more difficult for God to speak into that because you've attached yourself to that pride. Maybe you're asking a question you've asked multiple times and God's already answered and he's just waiting for you to be obedient in the small things. Sometimes in my life, uh, I've asked multiple times and, and what I've realized is God's actually answered. I've just been disobedient and not, did, not done what he told me to do the, in the first place. And so really just fundamentally getting down to the basics of taking care of the things that God told us to take care of and then approaching him out of relationship and believing that he does speak can be very helpful. So hopefully those quick tips can help you hear God more clearly. I wanna give you three questions as I close that maybe you can ask God and then listen for what he says. And so here's the three questions. They're very simple, but after this video, just ask God these three questions. Maybe write down what you hear and that can be really helpful as you're beginning to hear God more clearly. Here's the questions. They're simple. God, what quality do you like about me? And so as you consider that question later, maybe just write what you hear, those spontaneous thoughts. Maybe he leads you to a scripture. Or a second question, God, when was the last time you were, you were proud of me? And just wait and listen. And maybe write down what he says. And, and the third one, I use this question quite a bit when I'm teaching uh, the class, How to Hear from God. God, if you wanted to meet with me somewhere on this earth, face to face, where would it be? And even if it's crazy, if it's your car, or if it's in Hawaii, it, just write that down and pray about what God might say to you and where he might want to meet you. Those are three great introductory questions on how to hear from God more clearly. So hopefully in this short video, my hope was to share that God does speak and that we can tune into him more clearly. And using just the, the framework that I shared today can help you get a better handle on hearing from God's voice in your life because it will make a huge difference. Thanks for tuning in.